what people do when they're not trained to see things, to hear things, or to evaluate things with their mind, to prove things, to look at things with a trained ear, so to speak, to hear exactly what's being said, then they often will have a mindset or a programmed idea of what's about to be said rather than what is said. And part of what we do here in examining the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation in item-specific ways is to train the mind, evaluate the heart, to help us to see what is written here so we don't go beyond what it says. Often people will do that. They will go beyond what the Bible says. They'll say things like, a penny saved is a penny earned, or cleanliness is next to godliness, or God won't give you something bigger than you can handle. None of those are scriptural. None of those are a scripture. One of them is close, but it's not the scripture. But people have added a lot of meaning to those expressions to come up with ideas that they think is right here in the Bible. And it's not an interpretation problem. It's not a question of which Bible you use or how you used it or if they changed the meaning. Because you see, the Holy Spirit will speak to you from his word as he reveals what it says the way it says it. We just so happened to use the Open Bible because that was the one I started with. And we use King James because I like King James. It's no big deal whether I use the Textus Receptus or some other one. The point is, we're just going to evaluate what we're reading the way we're reading it as it is written, not as it is interpreted, not as it is added to, and not as it is possibly expounded upon in ways that maybe it doesn't say that. Now, for a Bible study, you should go out and study, and you can add all the books and all the commentaries and get into the revelation and the dissertation and the explanation and get into all that you want to do. That's good. That's wonderful. Matter of fact, that's powerful for you. But one of the things you ought to be able to do is to know when something is a idea about a scripture and something is from the scripture because you see that's all we want to do here is to be able to have you and have me say this is what the scripture says not what it might mean down the road what it might mean when we have more added to it or what it might mean if we took it out of context, but rather just what it says it means as we read it. Because I think God speaks clearly. I think he spoke, as we were reading in Genesis, things, and it was so. And when he spoke, it happened. So I think God knows how to speak to us. I think he knows how to communicate. I think he's big enough to get through to us in a very direct, simple way. So, in reading this, that's all we're doing. We're just reading it. We're not going to add to it. We're not going to take from it. We're not going to change it in any way. We're not going to bring in some interpretation we already know we have an opinion about. But we want to be blessed by those opinions and keep them to ourselves as they help us to understand the scripture, maybe down the road, but in one way, and one way alone. We want to be able to say that we know the scripture because Satan himself came in to Eve herself. And she said in reply to Satan, no, God hath not said. Because Satan questioned Eve if she knew what was written or if she knew what had been said. And he changed it. Hath God said? What hath God said? And so we stress that a lot to begin with in this first few, maybe seven videos to really get home the point of understanding that's all we're going to do. It's not going to get real complicated. As a matter of fact, one of the hardest things to teach a person is to keep it simple. Stupid. <laughs> K-I-S-S. -S. And 
My wife was a prime example when I taught her computers. She kept jumping ahead. I kept saying, no, computers go in order. You go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you don't go out of order. You go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you don't go out of order. When you write code, the same thing is true. You don't take one number out of that code or else it doesn't work. Everything is done in a Seder, an order, a way. And they're put there for a purpose and a design in order for God to accomplish what he wants in the way he wrote it, as he inspired it, as it is what it is and what it says it is. So we only have one verse today. So we keep it short. In chapter 1, we're looking at verse 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. That's all it says. <laughs> what came before? Well, you could check out the tape. Or you could read it. But when you read it, always remember, every word in there is there for a purpose. It's meant to be an explanation. It's meant to be a design. It's meant to contain a continuation of thought. It's meant to be that communication device with which the Holy Spirit is going to have you have ears to hear and eyes to see what it is that God would speak to you in what it says, the way it says, because it might fit something that's going on in your day today. I don't know, but the point is when you read it, only read it with what it says. And the evening and the morning were the third day. God says, and the evening and the morning were the third day. He didn't say night and day. <laughs> he said evening and morning. If you get specific about what you say, then your yes will be yes and your no will be no. If you get specific about what you use, then your evening will be evening and your morning will be morning. If you use those words as they are written, you're going to find that you cannot be deceived by yourself, by Satan, or by some other false teacher or false idea that might come along and try to change the Word of God from what it is to what it isn't. And the evening and the morning were the third day, and that's all it is. And you could say, and that's all she wrote. 